You can see it's sunshine north for the most part and then heavy lake effect snow. It is a narrow band though coming off of the lake southeast of Lake Erie. Yeah, there's that live update for you. Still some heavy snow extending from Sherman along the 86 into Ellery. Also just north of Jamestown and Randolph. Heavy snow there as well, just near Salamanca into Limestone and Olean. It does lighten up though as you head near Wellsville. We do still have that lake effect snow warning for areas south of Buffalo as you can see. Southern Erie County, Wyoming, Chautauqua, and also into McKean counties in northern Pennsylvania as well as portions of western New York. That warning goes until early tomorrow morning, 4 a.m. We also still have that winter weather advisory for Wyoming County, also Allegheny and into Potter County, northern Pennsylvania for the same time frame. So we have that weather impact alert continuing four areas south through tonight to cover that lake effect snow southeast of the lakes. Also some gusty winds up to around 30, 35 miles per hour. So slick conditions, reduced visibilities for that time frame. There's the snowfall totals an additional about half a foot of snow expected still for that higher terrain mainly from places like uh, Gowanda near Casadega, although lower amounts there, it picks up through Perrysburg and Ellicottville where we can see those higher additional snow totals and not as much elsewhere, especially north, less than an inch with just some maybe lake enhanced flurries off of Lake Ontario. But there's that lake effect snow continuing for the warning areas south of Buffalo across southern tier, southern Erie County right on through this evening. So the evening commute going to be slick for areas there. And then we do clear things up, dry things up as we head into Friday. Mostly sunny temperatures right now in the 20s and teens. Wind chill values still in the single digits across the board. Eight for Buffalo is what it feels like outside. Five for Wellsville. Colder air continues to come in for the weekend. Uh, bottoming out on Sunday, the coldest day with highs probably in the teens, lows in the single digits. So some of that lake effect snow continuing southeast of the lakes into tonight. And then we wind things down, quieting down, partly sunny. In fact, for Friday, but colder highs still continuing in those 20s below average. And then this weekend, we're going to watch some snow potentially Friday night into Saturday and some lake effect snow setting up. It looks limited for Saturday night into Sunday. Hello, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Stenonis. Lake effect snow, it's a rare and unique weather phenomenon and it can happen anywhere there's a large enough lake with cold enough air flowing over the relatively warmer lake water. A more common place for this, for all the weather ingredients to come together, well, it's the Great Lakes region and that's where we see most of that lake effect snow happening. And lake effect snow, as we know, can have a big weather impact. So let's go more into detail on that and how lake effect snow develops. Well, you get colder air that moves over the warmer lake water. And as that warmer air rises, since it's more buoyant and less dense than colder air, as it rises, it cools and condenses and forms clouds, then precipitation and snowfall that dumps downwind of the lake and over land and you can get multiple feet in a short period of time from lake effect snow. There are three main weather ingredients that need to come together for this. One, cold enough air flowing over that relatively warmer lake water to generate enough of that instability for convection and that rising air. And the greater the temperature difference, the heavier the snow can be. And you can even get thunder snow. Also, you need enough atmospheric moisture in place to get those snow crystals developing and growing in that rising unstable air. And three, the wind flow over the lake, best case, is over the longest fetch or length of the lake, giving that air more, more to work with in terms of generating more instability and producing snowfall. So the direction of the wind flow is important for the snow amounts and locations of the heaviest snow bands. For instance, over Lake Erie, when you get that southwesterly wind flow, that's when areas just northeast of the lake can get a lot of heavy snow, including Buffalo, New York. Same for a westerly flow over Lake Ontario. The eastern end of the lake then can get buried in the heavy snow. Another unique thing about lake effect snow is it is very localized. The lake effect snow bands are usually pretty narrow, sometimes only 10 to 15 miles wide, and just a few miles north or south of the band can be mostly sunny. And get this, a lake effect snow machine can just keep going and going for hours and days, generating significant amounts of snow very quickly, as long as the main weather ingredients stay in place. Lake effect snow events can be very intense and of long duration, producing snowfall rates up to around five inches per hour, creating whiteout conditions 
and blizzards, massive amounts of snow, multiple feet of snow can be produced in just a day. And lake effect snow events can last many, many days, which can shut down local cities and airports. That's why it is important to stay weather aware of updates on where and when lake effect snow bands can develop and have a safety plan in place, such as enough supplies to hunker down through the storm, also alternate routes and travel plans well before lake effect snow happens. I'm meteorologist Jennifer Stenonis. Driving during the winter can be tricky. Snow or ice can make the roads tough to navigate. Our reporters in Virginia and Ohio have the do's and the don'ts for driving in the snow and ways to prep your car ahead of the next storm. The best advice for winter weather driving, just don't do it. Stay at home if you can. If you can't avoid it, here's what you need to know. Our sources are the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, AAA, and Kelly Blue Book. So these are the top three things that you should do. First, keep your distance from other cars on the road. Second, never slam on the gas or the brake pedal and get your car prepared for whatever happens. That means filling up on gas, checking your tire pressure and tread, and always keep an emergency kit handy. Our sources also weighed in on some common questions around snow driving. First up, should you speed up before you get to a hill? AAA says hitting the gas hard could make your wheels spin and reduce your control over the car. Instead, try and get a little inertia going before you reach the hill and let that carry you up. Next, can children's winter coats make your car seat less safe? The NHTSA says that's true. Puffy coats can lead to loose-fitting harnesses. Instead, dress your child in thinner layers and put blankets or coats on after the harness is secured. And this one is a very common misconception. So Kelly Blue Book says you should actually not put your windshield wipers up before the snow comes. That can damage the springs that keep the wipers flush with the glass. But even if you follow all this advice, you still might find your car slipping on ice. So listen up to this. If you start skidding, take your foot off the gas pedal. Fight that urge to just slam on the brakes and instead tap the brake pedal lightly. And if your car slips to one side or the other, steer your wheel in that direction. All this will help you regain traction and self-correct out of the skid. With your Verify, I'm Kyle Johnson. Any extreme weather could have a negative effect on your car. Today I spoke to Luke Sato, who told me there are a few things that you can do to make sure your car runs smoothly in the cold weather. This is actually showing a weak battery. It should not drop below 10 volts. It's a busy time for auto shops across central Ohio. Luke Walker, owner of Luke's Auto, says check your tires, fluids, and battery before hitting the road. Cold weather and really temperature extremes in either direction can often tend to make something that's on the verge of breaking go ahead and break. This week, they've seen a lot of people for battery issues, noise complaints, and no heat. Sean Knox with Luke's Auto says if you have an electric vehicle, know that the battery might not last in this weather. Especially EV cars, they won't hold a charge nowhere near as long as a, as a normal car. So a lot of the EV customers we have also notice a reduction in how far they can get before they have to charge your car. Knox says it's not a bad idea to wait for your car to heat up before driving it. He says don't turn on your wiper blades until they are defrosted. Then he recommends getting your antifreeze checked. In colder temperatures, if the freeze protection is not right, it could cause overheating issues or actually freeze up and crack the engine block or the radiator. It'd be bad news real quick if it's not correct. And when the cold weather ends, wash your car. All the stuff that gets sprayed on the road is highly corrosive. And with us living in Ohio, we see a lot of rusty cars, which could help out just rinse them off month through the car wash. And Luke's Auto says there are a couple things you can keep in your car like this emergency safety kit and a brush just in case you're in an emergency, then you're prepared for it. Reporting in Columbus, Tara Jabor, 10 TV News. The National Weather Service says that car emergency kit should include jumper cables, a first aid kit, charger, a flashlight, flares, snacks, and water. And don't forget items to stay warm like boots, mittens, hats, and a blanket, as well as a snow shovel. Finally, you want to make sure you keep your gas tank full just in case you're stuck on the road longer than you planned. A ton of videos usually pop up on social media this time of year showing hacks to de-ice your car's windshield or clear the snow. And Aaron Sullivan with our station in Michigan put some of those viral claims to the test to see if they really work. Waking up and scraping ice and snow off your car early in the morning is not an ideal way to start the day. So what if it could be made easier? 
social media life hacks show that using everyday household items can help. Some users say you can use items you already have at home, like vinegar, sandwich bags, and rubbing alcohol. So I put some to the test on one of our station cars. I first tested a method using a sandwich bag filled with warm tap water. This hack is for defrosting your car windshield in the morning. I found that the window was so frozen solid that this didn't really work, but I'm sure it could work if there's no ice on your car. Next, if you're running late and need your windshield defrosted quickly, rubbing alcohol can help. I did notice this helped melt the ice just a little bit, but I can't say that this life hack was life-changing. I also attempted to create a DIY de-icer in a spray bottle using three parts vinegar to one part water. This did help with scraping ice off of the car's windshield, but the smell was extremely overpowering. And I do warn you, if you try this at home, you might inhale some of that vinegar. So I do not recommend. And if you experience icy doors and handles, I know I do in the morning, well, you can put WD-40 on the rubber edges around your door. This is going to help prevent your door from freezing shut. And for door handles, hand sanitizer can help de-ice those handles early in the morning when they're frozen shut. And lastly, put your visors down inside your car to trap warm air when defrosting your car towards your windshield. This is gonna help quicken the defrosting up. Overall, I would say these life hacks didn't necessarily make my life easier, but if you want to try it at home, good luck. I hope it works out for you.